Hey guys, Miss Hunter here, and today we are going to talk about chapter 33, which is over nutrition and health and disease. I hope a lot of what we talk about in this lecture is actually a review for you, whether that be from high school or from a nutrition class you've taken um, in college, a lot of it should be review. I'm going to try and go through it quickly and just pick out some of the high points for you guys. You should also review the chapter in your text, chapter 33, and um, you will also be completing your nutrition projects, which should elaborate some of the information that we're going to go over in this video. Here are your learn learning objectives for this chapter. All right, so we're going to talk about nutrition, which is the study of the interaction of the seven types of nutrients found in food and how they relate to our body and how they keep our body healthy. So nutrition and digestion, obviously we have to digest food for it to be working and to help us stay healthy. So nutrition includes the ingestion, digestion, absorption, and metabolism of food. Absorption is the transfer of nutrients from the GI tract into the bloodstream. Without absorption, the body would not receive the nutrients that we need to stay healthy. So let's talk about the types of nutrients. Nutrients can really be divided up into two different kinds of groups, the ones that provide us energy and the ones that don't. So remember we said there are seven different types of nutrients. Three of those give us energy, and those are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Then there are four other types of nutrients that do not provide energy but are very important still for our body um, metabolism and for our um, nutrient intake and everything like that. And those four that do not provide energy include vitamins, minerals, water, and fiber. So first we're going to discuss the energy nutrients. So the first one is carbs, carbohydrates. These are our major source of energy and they are really made up of units called sugar. The main sources of our carbohydrates really come from fruits, vegetables, cereal grains, and sugar. It's important to make sure that we limit our extra added amounts of sugar because remember these items like fruits and vegetables and things like this already have a natural sugar component to them. And it's important to note here that one gram of carbohydrates contain four calories and we're going to talk about this with each of our energy nutrients as we go along. So fats is our second energy nutrient and these exist as triglycerides in our body. So a triglyceride is three fatty acids attached to a glycerol molecule. As we said for carbs, one gram is four calories. For fats though, however, you'll see that one gram contains nine calories. So you're getting more calories per gram. So that's important to think about when we have fat in our diet. Here are some examples of grams of fat per serving of common foods. So remember you can think about one gram and that's going to equal nine calories, nine calories. So as we look at this, you can kind of think through it that way. Our last energy nutrient is a protein. A protein is um, beta, made up of amino acids and there are 22 amino acids in proteins. Eight of these are needed in the diet for our bodies to nor uh, function normally, and a complete protein has all eight of the essential amino acids. The best sources of complete proteins are meats and animal products such as milk and eggs. So this is why individuals that have um, vegetarian diets or vegan diets, um, it's really important to th for them to watch what amino acids they're intaking because they're not eating these complete proteins a lot of the times since they delete the meat and animal products from their diet. Um, the body uses carbs and fats as its primary energy sources. However, when these are in short supply, so if we don't have enough carbs and fats, then our body starts uses, using our proteins. And proteins are really um, the component of every cell in our body. They're the building blocks for our bones, muscles, skin, and our blood. So the energy balance, this is the amount of energy that a substance is able to supply and it can be measured in kilocalories. Um, 
we're talking about, remember, the calories with these energy um, nutrients. So carbs and proteins give us both four calories for each gram. And remember, fats gave us nine calories for each gram. So the metabolic rate is related to the changes in body with respect to energy. So this is the balance between what is brought into our body, so that energy amount that's bringing in from those carbs, fats, and proteins, versus the amount of energy that our body is actually using. So that's that balance. What are we intaking and what are we using? The level of energy required for activities that occur when the body is at rest is called our basal metabol uh, metabolism rate, basal metabolism rate, or our BMR. So for optimal ener energy balance, the largest amount of our calories should come from carbs. So the percentage should be between 45 to 65% of our energy from carbohydrates. Our percentage of calories from fat should be no more than 35%. Really, we should get closer to 20% from fat. And then our protein should make up 10 to 35% of our energy intake. Here we have my plate. This has been developed by the government to tell us how we should be eating and our nutrition requirements. If you'll remember, or some of you might not even be old enough, we used to have the food pyramid, but has now changed to my plate, which helps develop our serving sizes for the amount of um, foods we should be eating. So other nutrients, remember these are not energy producing nutrients, but they are still very important to our body. So vitamins are a class of nutrients in which specific um, functions are based on. So we have two different classes of vitamins. We have fat soluble and water soluble. The important thing to note here is there are four fat sol soluble vitamins. So vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat soluble and water soluble are opposite of those and they're not easily stored and the blood levels must be maintained by a constant dietary intake. So these fatty ones are stored in our fat tissue and we can kind of use them as needed. But these water soluble ones, we must constantly be intaking those to keep them at a, a consistent level. So here I have um, developed this uh, table for you guys for the different vitamins, where they come from and what function they have. So be sure you're familiar with this and think through some of those common functions and some of these you may easily be able to pull from um, different sources that you've either learned or heard of. Um, so some big ones, you know, as you go through, you may have heard um, about B1, how it converts glucose to energy. Um, you know, let's see some other ones that we can pull out. Um, vitamin D as we go through um, all of those listed here. Vitamin C, um, things that you've heard of in the past that will um, help you kind of figure out what these vitamins are used for. So another type of nutrient is an antioxidant. And what antioxidants do is that they um, fight off free radicals. So when our bodies use oxygen or when they're burning energy, they our bodies produce what are called free radicals. And what um, free radicals are, they can also become, um, they can form from exposure to like bad things like pollution, cigarette smoke, and things like that. Um, but they're really, they're bad for our bodies. These free radicals are bad for our bodies and they can attack um, certain cells in our system. But these antioxidants, they fight those free radicals um, and they come from certain primary antioxidants, such as vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, and selenium. Um, and there are some good sources of antioxidants. For instance, um, blueberries are really good ones. Um, there are some other ones that are noted in your text. Other nutrients include minerals. And minerals differ from vitamins in two ways. So vitamins are complex, um, while minerals are singular elements. And then vitamins are only required in my, minute quantities. And some minerals are required, required in larger amounts. And then minerals can fall into two different groups as well. There are major minerals and trace minerals. So our major ones are calcium, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, magnesium, chloride, and iron, where 
there are trace ones that are only required in smaller amounts, which include like copper, chromium, and I'm not going to read all of those to you guys. Um, you should note that some minerals are considered electrolytes. So when you hear that word electrolytes, you can think minerals. Um, and the levels of these minerals in the bloodstream must be carefully balanced for the body to function in a healthy state. So for instance here, one that's really important that we look at a lot in our lab values would be potassium. Um, it helps deal with um, muscle contraction and electrical impulses and things. And when our potassium level is not within the appropriate range, we often worry um, about certain things going on with our bodies. You can see the rest of these um, minerals listed here. Then one last nutrient we're going to talk about is water, and water has a multitude of functions in the body. Um, it's a solvent, it helps as a transporter, a lubricator, and also a thermostat. And it's super important because our body is composed of 50 to 65 percent water. And it, we're constantly losing water through perspiration, feces, urine, even breathing. And so it obviously has to be continually replenished. I'm sorry, that was not the last nutrient. Um, also fiber. So fiber is important for functioning, especially of our GI tract. This is what adds bulk to our feces and allows us to have a healthy digestive system. And fiber comes only from plant sources. That's why it's important to eat enough fiber in our diet, those green leafy vegetables and fruits, um, apples, all of those things that help us with a good fiber level. And it's recommended to have 25 to 30 grams of fiber per day. I did want to add about food labels here. So you'll see these food labels um, have changed over the past few years. Um, they've kind of made things a little bit bigger and changed what's more important to have listed. Um, so just kind of take a look at this, what's included on a food label and how you read one. There are some special dietary requirements. Um, we will discuss those in your nutrition project, but I also have some of those here. What's really important to know is that so many Americans have dietary allergies. So think nut allergies, fish allergies, all of those things that we need to avoid um, with some of our patients and teach them um, proper nutrition if they are allergic to those things. Lactose intolerance is also pretty common. It occurs when the body is not able to digest the natural sugar lactose, which is found in dairy products. It causes nausea, cramping, gas, bloating, and diarrhea. There's also gluten sensitivity, which has been in the media a lot more recently. Um, this is an allergy to gluten, so those bread products, and so patients um, will be excluding gluten from their daily lives. I do want to note that diet and culture play a huge part of our nutrition and our dietary intake. So just understanding that where the patient may have come from or their different um, backgrounds, ethnic groups, all of these things can and will affect how our patients see their dietary intake and um, how they believe and want to follow different guidelines. Some other things to note as far as nutrition are some common eating disorders, one being anorexia nervosa, and this is where there's a fixation on body weight and image, and they will rigidly control their diet, resulting in weight loss, which can um, become life-threatening. Another eating disorder would be bulimia nervosa. This involves eating large amounts of food and then purging um, using self-induced um, ways such as vomiting, laxatives, or even diuretics. Um, these people may not be severely underweight, but they will have um, some telltale signs of um, their disorder. So they will have some electrolyte imbalances, some tooth erosion from the vomiting, um, just some different things that can pinpoint that they are um, suffering with this disorder. And the last one here, as far as those eating disorders, is binge eating disorder, similar to bulimia, but without the purging. So just think about um, episodes of large intakes of food. Um, sometimes they will restrict their diet in between these in between these binging episodes, um, and it also predisposes them to some other um, substance disorders like alcohol or substance abuse. 
So that is all I have for you guys. Um, be sure to remember to read over chapter 33 and work on your nutrition projects.